arm day. Hi everybody, John Meadows here, and I'm with my man Luke Carroll, Mr. USA. What year was that, last year? 18. 2018. We're gonna do biceps uh, right now uh, for this video, but we're also gonna do triceps. So you'll get, a, you'll get a bicep video today. It's gonna be a very thoughtful approach on how to hammer your biceps. And then we're also gonna do triceps. So that'll be released the next day. So stay tuned, this is gonna be a cool workout. Hopefully you're gonna learn some stuff as we go too. Plus we're gonna work hard and get a crazy pump. So what we're doing here is a banded curl. Typically when you do a regular curl, you're gonna have uh, your biggest challenge kind of in the mid range part of the range of motion. And then once you get past that, it lightens up. So you don't quite get the contraction that uh, you could. So by adding the band, once you hit past that sticking point, you have band tension that kicks in because think about how the band's pulling down so it doesn't get easy. For, so normally, here to here is tough. And it's kind of easy. Well, now once you get up real high, now the band tension kicks in. And you can even, you can even elevate your front delt a little bit and get a little bit more peak contraction. I know a lot of people like to keep stationary delts, but um, you actually have an attachment in your shoulder too for your bicep for the long head so up and the band tension kicks in it gets real hard and then squeeze so that's what we're doing here we're doing three or four sets of eight to ten all right let's get as many as you can do on this one okay perfect Perfect, that's it. Come on, squeeze, squeeze, lock it in. Work the top, feel at the top. That's it, keep moving. Come on, keep going. Come on, keep going. Come on, let's go. Come on, keep moving, keep moving. Come on, there we go. Come on, keep going, a couple more. Good, one more. There we go, there we go. All right, so we're gonna do a pinwheel curl now. This is gonna be a lot of brachialis. That's this little bubble right here. And it's also gonna get the long head of your bicep, kind of more of this outer part. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna curl across your body and your hand, your grip is gonna be neutral, okay? What I like to do is I kind of like to dip my shoulder into it and then really flex like so, okay? So you can do them like this, but I kind of like to dip my shoulder and really get up into that contraction, and work that long head hard. So if you're looking for this part of your arm right here, this is, uh, this is the movement to nail it. So we did two sets there, and now we're gonna do two sets more of the standard form. So standing, elbows pinned to your side, boom. Now you're probably thinking, man, you guys are doing a lot of brachial or brachialis work. We are, that's intentional. I think the brachialis is really, really underappreciated. 
When you develop that muscle right there, it pushes out your body and your tri, it actually makes your arm look bigger. It's also a very strong muscle, it's very powerful. So um, I just, I think people should probably do more brachialis work. So that's what we're doing. Now we're gonna do another two sets for brachialis as well. Of course, you're gonna feel this in your lower bicep as well now, standing like this. <clears throat> All right, so our second set and our last set here, we're gonna to go to failure, and then we're gonna add in 10 partials at the bottom. So we're gonna come up halfway. The other thing that really will help your knees is if you grip the dumbbells real tight, squeeze them real tight. It'll activate your forearms more, but that's okay. Everything gets activated more. So. Where it gets fun right here. Uh, this is where it gets fun right here. One, two, three, four. Come on. Come on. Keep working. Keep working. Keep working. Keep working. There we go. Burn, baby. All right guys, so now we're doing an incline dumbbell curl. Watch Luke, watch what he's doing at his wrist. He's, he's gonna be supinating on the way up. Your biceps also supinate. The nice thing about leaning back on a bench like this is you get a really nice stretch. It makes the first third of the movement really tough. So we're loading the bottom, we're stretched out, and we're supinating. And the other thing, notice, notice how Luke's arms are kind of pointed out to the side a little. That actually works the short head or the inner part of your bicep a little better. So there's a lot of things going on in this exercise. There we go. There we go.
some spider curls now. We're going pretty much to failure, and then we're throwing in some partials at the bottom. There we go. Absolutely love this exercise. Good, those are perfect. Perfect. Excellent. Excellent. Come on. There we go. Come on. Notice the stretch he's getting. Okay, now we're gonna hit partials. One, two, three, four. Let's go ahead and go to 10. Five, come on, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, good. My arm wouldn't even hinge. <laughs> so when I'm getting the weight up, I'm trying to lower really slow on the way down. But then when we finish with failure again, partials at the bottom, that's where the weight's really tough on these. But these put your arm in a really safe position to stretch. So we've been pumping our arms up to get them full of blood. And now, now if you've noticed, the last two exercises have been really stretching in nature to really stretch them out fully. So we're gonna do one more set here. This will be our third set. One of the things Luke and I were talking about is the design of this. Uh, a lot of times, bigger guys, we have a challenge keeping our elbows in place. You'll notice as we get fatigued, mainly more than me, more than Luke, you notice my elbows were kind of going out. That's not what you want. But I've seen these machines where they had a little pad on it right here. Um, Dave Tate has one out at Elite FTS where it forces your elbows to stay in. So you're really locked into that elbow flexion. So we're just thinking, man, this would be cool if this was made with some pads right here to keep you locked in so you're in a better position. And the other thing I would say is some people are probably going to see the partials and think, oh, you're barely moving the weight. But that stuff coming out of that stretch position with that much blood in your arms, even if you're only moving it a couple inches, that stuff's really challenging. Really, really challenging. And, you know, I remember seeing Tom Platts do complete range of motion to failure, then half the range of motion to failure, then a quarter of the range of motion to failure. So it's just a way to work really, really hard. So never be afraid to throw in those extra really short uh, reps that are really a really small range of motion after you've completed the full range of motion. So anyways, we've got one more exercise to do for buys. So let's do some reverse curls. So we're finishing up with two sets of reverse curls, a little bit more forearm. More brachialis, remember we love brachialis, but also brachial radialis, that's the big muscle at the top of your forearm. Right here. That's a powerful manly muscle there we like. So we're gonna go two sets to failure here. You want somewhere around 10 to 12 reps.
All right, so uh, I want to thank Luke for biceps, but he's not going to leave because he's staying for triceps. So <laughs> in the meantime, where can people reach you at? Uh, you guys can find me at Luke the Hulk on Instagram. So hit me up. All right, so that's biceps. I kind of lost count of how many things we did. <laughs> but we did everything. We did the uh, long head of the bicep, the short head of the bicep. We did supination. We did brachial, brachialis, brachial radialis, partials. Yeah. Did everything. A I like bit we band work. a couple sets on everything. Instead of doing seven different workouts of four sets each, we just kept it to two sets, and that really made the volume correct. We were able to do a lot of variety, but still kept the volume correct. Yeah, and I think that there was one thing I could just, like one overriding principle I could teach people, it would be you, you really have to have meaningful sets where you have to put out a lot of effort and you have to work really hard. But the more of those sets you put out, the less volume you can do. So if you're taking your sets to failure every single time or close to it, you can't do quite as many sets. So you may want to do like what Luke and I did today and do more exercises. If you're not taking your sets to failure and you're just kind of pumping, then you're going to have to play the volume game. You're going to have to do a lot more sets. So, and I think that's just a good principle for people in general, just yeah. to understand. Because everybody's looking for kind of the perfect number of sets, so the perfect amount of frequency. It's kind of different for yeah. everyone. It, it, it is. It's, it is. It's, so it boils down to effort and then what you can recover from. Mm -hmm. So you guys can do this by itself, a bicep workout. We're getting ready to do triceps now. It's going to be on another video tomorrow the day after. So we'll see you here real soon. So stay tuned for the tricep version of this. If you like that video, I know you're going to love my app available on the Google Play Store for Android, iPhones, and the Apple Store. There's so much information on here, it's amazing. Training, workouts, hundreds of workouts, nutrition methodology questions, chemical enhancement, supplementation, client prep, and a Q&A button. Check it out.